In this lesson, we're going to cover how to create a breakout view. A breakout view is going to be where we're going to draw a closed shape. It could be a rectangle, lines, arcs, circles, or a spline, like we're going to draw in our example here. And it needs to be closed, and we're going to draw that on a sketch. The file that I have open right now is called breakoutview.idw, and it can be found in your Chapter 5 exercise folder. So I'm going to start off. I'm going to just move my cursor over the edges of the view, pick on that, and then select Sketch. Now that I'm drawing on that sketch, from the line pulled on, which yours may be, I'm going to go ahead and click on Spline, and I'm going to zoom up close. And the key here is to draw a closed shape. So we'll just work our spline around the edges. And getting it closed is definitely critical, otherwise it will not work. And we'll have to go back and close that off later. So now that I have my shape drawn, what I'm going to do from the Drawing Views panel, go ahead and click on Breakout View. And I'm going to select a point inside the view. Move the dialog box over. So the profile was already selected for us, being that we only have one. And there are four options here from our drop-down list, and we'll cover all four of these in this lesson. So first of all, we're going to do from point. The offset value is zero, but you could change that if you wanted to. I'm just going to slide on down, and I'm going to pick a point in the front view which is critical here, so the sketch in this case is in my top view, but I'm going to pick a point in the projected view of that, if you will, or in this case the parent view. And now from the display, we can section through all the parts, so I'm going to go ahead and do that, click OK. And we have our section view created, but let's take a look at that, and I'm going to pull off an isometric view. And let's go ahead and move that isometric view up so we can see it. And so we can see it a little bit cleaner. I'm going to go ahead and shade that view. So if I zoom in tight on both those views, you can see that that is our breakout view to a point. So instead of going back and forth, what I'm going to do is just edit the existing breakout view. And let's take a look at our other options. So the next option here is to sketch. So what to sketch is going to do, I'm going to cancel out of it. It's going to require another sketch. So I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to take a view, or select the, the base view in this case, the, the rectangle. Because what I'm going to do, again, I'm going to draw on a spline. Because I'm going to create the boundary set that I want this breakout view to terminate at. And as soon as I'm done, click return, exit out of that sketch environment. And again, let's go back, edit our breakout view. And we'll go to sketch. Select our sketch. Click OK. And you can see now that the breakout view terminates at our spline. Let's take a look at our next option here. Right click again, edit breakout, is to hole. So in this case, I'm simply going to select a hole in my base view, click OK. And you can see that the breakout terminates right at the center of that hole. So as long as we're here right now, let's take a closer look here. And you can see that it's sectioning through all the parts, but we don't necessarily have to have that happen. I'm going to edit the breakout view, and I'm going to uncheck section all parts. So at this point, we can see that there's really no change to our model. But if I kind of follow the hierarchy down here, and I'm going to expand that breakout.iam. That's the assembly that this file was based on. And what I can do is select specific components, right click on them, and under the section participation, I go ahead and click none. 
And now we can see that the spring is no longer sectioned, so you could continue to do that for all of your components as needed. Let's minimize that for a second. And let's take a look at our last breakout. And we'll edit the breakout. And the last one is through part. Now with through part, you'll notice I have the selector option. And let's slide this over. There's two different ways for me to do this. I can go back and select components in the graphics window. Go ahead, click OK. You can see that the components that were sectioned are the ones that I selected. Remember, I could also go back and click on section all parts and it would go through everything. So let's take a look at that one more time. I'm going to expand the, the breakout and let's edit the breakout view one more time. Edit breakout. And where it says through all parts, I'm going to go ahead and click on the selector option. And I can just select specific components here. I could hold down the control key to select multiples if I wanted to. Selecting the components, in this case, just the two outside components are sectioned.